turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 17, verse 11. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. I want to encourage you today. We've already been amazingly encouraged. God is so good, but I believe that over the next 20, 30 minutes or so that this word is going to get into your hearts and it's going to begin to just, I don't know, solidify some things and help. Uh, I'm, I'm very much aware, both spiritually and both what I've heard naturally, uh, that, that there are some, uh, that some people have been dealing with fear. Um, there's been some a little bit of confusion, some uncertainty. You know, part of it is the season that we're in. Part of it is what's going on in our nation. Part of it is, you know, 2020. Uh, so far, like, people aren't saying 2020 best year ever. Um, that's not the motto right at the moment, although I, d I declare it can be the best, best year ever. Amen? And, um, and so what I wanted to do is I, I, wanted, I wanted to kind of help kind of bring some, some stability to some things that are going on so that, you know, so that you know where to keep your heart settled. Because if your heart's not settled, then it's, it's, going to affect, it's going to affect your day, it's going to affect your weeks, it's going to affect your relationships. Okay? And, and so at the end of the day, our heart being settled needs to be a primary thing. Our heart, the Bible says in Psalm 112, that blessed is the man who fears the Lord. And it goes on down and it says that his heart is fixed. His heart is a, his, his heart. It's Father's Day. Uh, <laughs> we hope it didn't slip right out. But uh, <laughs> Woo. All right. His heart is fixed. <laughs> trusting trusting in the Lord. In other words, his heart is established. And, 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 and it says, because he trusts the Lord, right? He, he will not be afraid of evil tidings. I'm telling you what, I hope I can get through this tonight, today. It's going to be good. But, you know, there's, so as people are getting back out, moving around, we're coming back to church, we're, um, you're going to restaurants, you're doing all of that kind of thing. So, you know, I, we, we've already had a couple of people in the church uh, that uh, I know for a fact that have been tested positive uh, for uh, COVID-19. And now they're doing fine, no issues, very mild symptoms, which the majority of it is very, very mild and most people never even experience anything, okay? But here's the thing, what has happened is, is because of the hysteria that has surrounded just that word, COVID-19 or the word COVID or coronavirus or whatever it is, that as soon as people, uh, like they say, one of the symptoms, you know, is, is that you may lose your sense of smell or taste or something like that. And so now all of a sudden, as soon as you can't taste food, it's like, oh my gosh, that must mean that I've got, I've got COVID. Like the, the fear that hits people right away over a mild symptom, the, here, the, the fear that, that, that people are experiencing because of the hysteria and because of what has, has been, what the news is, is trumpeting and all of that kind of stuff, that it is, it is after your heart. The kingdom of darkness, Satan is after your heart. If, if he can... If he can do anything to get you to move off from what God has said, to move off of the unchanging nature of God, to move off the fact that God is always faithful. The Bible says that when I'm not faithful, he is still faithful. 
God's faithfulness in my life isn't dependent on my faithfulness to him. I don't filter the unchanging nature of God through my own changing nature. Through my day-to-day -day mistakes or my day-to-day -day, uh, uh, poor choices or whatever that is. I can't let the way that God works in my life and that our Father loves me to be dependent on where I am or how I feel in a given moment. And so what has happened here is that now people are like, man, I, 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 I feel, feel a little scratchy on my throat. And the first thing that you hear, COVID-19. All of a sudden, I can't taste my wife's cooking. Somebody said that could be a blessing. I didn't say it. I heard it over here somewhere. <laughs> COVID-19. <laughs> and so do you see how we have now been conditioned? How our default, because of what we have been inputting and what we have been filling our heart with, and so today what I want to do is I want to help you, I want to help condition your heart to stay in that place of consistency, of being established, of being steadfast, so that whatever may come, so that whatever you may experience, so whatever you hear, so whatever you feel, that your heart is not moved. In Luke chapter 17, verse 11, I've been trying to do a series called 37 Miracles of Jesus. So we're going to look at one of those right now. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. All right, so you know, uh, in, in, uh, which I, we, we talked about another leper, and so if you weren't here for that, basically leprosy at that time, it was, uh, it was contagious. And so they had to, to determine that they had leprosy, they had to quarantine for up to 14 days. That's pretty interesting. And not only that, but uh, it, was, it was their, their law, their rules, that they had to maintain six foot social distancing. That's true. Back then, it's a, it was the exact, same, uh, the exact same thing. A leper could not get within six feet of another individual. Okay? And so, it's interesting how much, um, you know, that, that the thing of leprosy, and, the, and, and they had to wear, they had to wear uh, uh, a face covering as well. And, and so, there's so many things that are so interesting that parallel to what we've been going through with COVID-19, but here they are. So these men knew that they couldn't come up to Jesus, but they stood afar off and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So the first thing that I want you to understand is they, as they, as they talked to him, they, they said, Jesus, and they said, Master, they, rec they recognized he was the one that was in authority. They recognized who he was. They didn't come in there demanding as much as they came in with meekness and they understood, have mercy on us. They looked to him. Let him be preeminent in all things. Jesus, have mercy on us. So when he saw him, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. Stop there. Think about that. If you know that Jesus is laying hands on people and people are being healed and miracles are happening, and so you're saying, have mercy on us. They want to be cleansed. So I've I said this before, lepers weren't really healed. Lepers were cleansed. Okay? It was something that needed to be cleansed. And so that's the way it was referred. Uh, so it wasn't so much a miracle in healing, but cleansing. And so what Jesus said to them is he said, Go show yourself to the priest. Now, what is significant about that? The law that they were under, the law of Moses, said that once you are cleansed, you had to go 
sacrifice. You, you, you had to offer a sacrifice to the priest and so that they could pronounce you clean. In the eyes of the law, you were not able to have social interaction until the priest declared that you were clean. Now, here's the thing. When Jesus told them, so this is a really quick story, right? Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Okay, go show yourself to the priest. He didn't pray for him. He didn't rebuke the devil. He didn't say, let's all move into intercessory prayer. He didn't do any of that. All, you know, sometimes it's not as difficult to receive from God as we try to make it out to be. See, Jesus always operated from a finished work perspective. Why? Because in the same way that God said, I am that I am. When, when Moses said, God, who do I tell them sent me? Or sent me, he said, tell them I am that I am. Not I was that I was and not that I will be that I will be. I am everything that you need right now today. God lives in the eternal now. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so all that Jesus did is since they said have mercy, okay, I'm having mercy. Right now his mercies are new every morning. And so what did he do? He said, all right, then go show yourself to the priest. What that said to them is I'm healed. He didn't have to say you're healed. They knew Oh, wow. When I go to the priest, they're going to pronounce me as absolutely healed. And so they listened and they obeyed what Jesus said. And look at what happens here. As they went. So it was that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. So Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest. Guess what? Nothing had changed. As long as they were standing there, nothing has changed. As long as they stood still, Come on, man. as long as they, if they stayed there, listen to this word, if they stayed there and they waited to see a manifestation, if they were waiting for it and looked around, it's like, I still have leprosy. I can't go yet. Listen to me and listen to me well. Many people get stuck in their symptoms. They get stuck in their sickness. They get stuck in what they're feeling. They get stuck in what they're seeing. They get stuck in that and, their, and what's coming from the outside. And, and, and so for them... They need some outward sign that God is at work in their life before they'll ever take a step of faith. And that's not faith. And they identify, will identify, you know, with, man, I'm dealing with this pain. I'm dealing with these symptoms. I'm dealing with this. It must mean this and this. And so our identity gets wrapped up in this external, in this natural, when our identity needs to be founded in what God has said. It needs to be founded in the supernatural. It needs to be founded in what the Word has said. It is more sure. Your Word is forever settled in heaven. Is His Word forever settled in your life? He's already spoken it. He's already declared it. As far as God is, is, is concerned, it is a done deal. Good Alabama Eng English, he already done did it. Somebody say, he done did it. And so as far as Jesus was concerned, it was a done deal. Now, get out of your place of looking at yourself and go. Just go. It's, I, I love the word that Jennifer gave this morning that that in your going, live your life. Don't let the pain, don't let the, the sickness, don't let the, the finances, don't let 
the depression. Don't let, don't let those things stop you from moving in life. Don't set up this, well, God, I don't, I don't feel a change. God, I don't see a change. God, I, I don't... That, that means that, that God is dependent on what's going on in your natural life and what you naturally feel, and you're giving more value to what you feel, what you see, and what you are experiencing in a given moment than what God has said in His eternal moment. Praise God. So here are these, the, these, these lepers... They couldn't stay stuck. They couldn't say, well, I need to wait and see a change. No, it says, as they went, they were cleansed. Once they made the decision, you know, and, and think about this. They had to get their mind, they had to get their focus off of what was going on with them. Think about this. So I want to I say this. Your outlook will determine your outcome. Let me say it again. Your outlook will determine your outcome. What is your attitude like? You know, as old saying, your attitude will determine your altitude. When you're flying a plane, as you point the nose up, your altitude climbs. As you point your nose down, well, you don't want to do that for too long. It'll stop you, right? So your attitude determines your altitude. Your outlook will determine your outcome. What is, what, where is your focus? What are you looking at? And so what they had to do for a moment, here they were, they were looking to Jesus. Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest. Now what they had to do is they had to turn and they had to begin to go in the direction. Their focus was in where they were going, which was to their solution, was to the ones that was going to declare them clean. And as they went, all of a sudden they experienced a change in their body. As they went, they experienced the cleansing. And look at, look at, the, look at the rest of it. Look at what happened. As they went... They were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned. And with a loud voice, he glorified God and fell down on his feet, on his face, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now, this is awesome. He was a Samaritan, which means he, he was not a Jew. So, first of all, the grace of God was so awesome that this non Jewish person that Jesus just included him in the whole miracle and said, go show yourself to the priest as well. He didn't discriminate against him. Right. Man, I just love that. But this Samaritan, this non-Jewish guy, he like, oh man, I've been cleansed. Maybe this was the guy that was like, you guys might be healed, but I'm not going to be one of the ones that get healed. Maybe he didn't feel like he was worthy. Maybe he didn't feel like he was part of the covenant. He wasn't really. Maybe he didn't feel like he deserved it. Maybe he was like, wow, if these other guys get healed, that's great, but I'm not sure about me. And so he cried out with a loud voice. He glorified God. And then Jesus answered, verse 17, were, not, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner. Wow, isn't that something that only the non-Jewish person really gave glory to God? Your outlook determines your outcome, your focus, your praise. I really feel like that for the next seven days, if I want to challenge you with something, it is this. Praise, worship, Thanksgiving Amen. on a day-to-day -day basis. Every day when Jennifer and I are doing our nine o'clock little Facebook live thing in the mornings, um, we start out the day. Father, I thank you that today is the day that you have made. Today is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice. In other words, I, I, what I want you to notice when it says I will, and that's a scripture in Psalm. I will rejoice. So what that's saying is I, with an act of my will, make a decision to rejoice today. 
Well, what if, uh, what, what if, what if work isn't going well? I will rejoice. Well, what if, what if my wife walk, uh, woke up on the wrong side of the bed? I will rejoice. Well, what if the food wasn't good today? I will rejoice. Well, what if, what if my, finance, my financial situation isn't good? I what? Will rejoice. Well, what if I don't feel good when I wake up? I will rejoice. So many times we, we want to respond with how we feel in a given moment when what we should be doing is telling ourselves how we're going to feel. I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. Now, to be glad in the day that God has made means you have to have a smile on your face. A smile on your face. The Bible says that he that has a merry heart, a merry heart produces a cheerful countenance. If you're happy and you know it, <laughs> Clap your hands. But you're, if you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. Right? Makes a cheerful countenance. So people know when you're not rejoicing and when you're not being glad in it. Let's give glory to God. Look at Proverbs chapter 15. Verse 15. Oh man, this is awesome. We'll kind of bring it to a close, but this is awesome right here. Thank you, Father. This is good. All the days are, uh, of the afflicted are evil. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. Okay, so what is he talking about here? Well, the person that's afflicted is just going to have bad things happen to him all the time. So, but what is he describing? He's describing a person's outlook. Think about this. All the days, can, let me maybe rephrase this for a moment. All the days of a victim... are evil. All the days of a poor me, look at what's happening to me, nothing ever changes for me, you don't know what I'm going through right now, oh my God, I, I lost my taste of smell, please get down. You know, there are people that live their lives with a victim mentality their whole life. They're the way that they are because of their parents. They're the way that they are because of an abusive father. Father. They're the way that they are because of something that happened uh, uh, in school. They're the way that they are because the system wasn't, uh, wasn't just, you know, in, in, in college or the system, you know, when they got to work. Like there's always a reason why you are under the circumstances. There's always a reason why you're a victim. There's always a reason. And, and guess what? It's never your fault. Isn't that amazing? It's never your fault. It's always somebody else's fault. You're the victim. You've been victimized. And, and I'm not making light of the fact that people have, have had real trauma in their lives and they've been, real, they've been victimized or they've, they've, they've been abused or whatever that is. I'm not making light of that at all. But you don't have to carry that stigma and that identity and live from that place for the rest of your life. Because what happens is if that's the way that you see yourself, that's your outlook on line, life, this is the word of God that says all of the days of those with a victim mindset, with a victim outlook, with things aren't getting better, with what's going to happen next, all the days when you think, when you feel like you're the one that's being afflicted, you're the one that's being uh, 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 done wrong, you're the one, and that's the way you think and view yourself, your outlook determines your outcome, and so you keep getting victimized victimized over and over and over again, and you'll never rise above it. Amen. And the change doesn't start in your circumstances. 
And it doesn't start in the way people treat you. It starts in the way you see yourself. The Bible says, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. And so to finish up this, this one verse here, let's bring it back up on, on screen. All the days of a person that has an afflicted outlook, a victim mindset are evil, but he who, who is of a merry heart, he who is of a merry heart, look at this, has a continual feast. Right in the middle of our nation, a seemingly people going crazy, right in the middle of COVID-19, right in the middle of the uncertainty of our future and everything that's going on around us, you can have a merry heart and live in a continual feast. You can enjoy your Father God. You can enjoy the life that He has for you. You can enjoy your spouse. You can enjoy your family. You can have fun. You can experience it. You don't have to be weighed down with what everything else is going on and the news and all of that. And you don't have to allow that to affect your heart and to, to just, and you wake up in a perpetual bad mood all the time because of everything that's going on. Move away from all of this, this anger and negativity and stuff like that, man. You know, the Bible says that Jesus in him was life and the life was the light of men. I'm going to ask the worship team to come on up. And the life was the light of men. But then it says this, the light shined into the darkness and the dark, darkness could not comprehend it. The darkness and what that word comprehend, that's in John chapter 1, uh, comprehend means it could not seize it. It could not grab hold of it. Listen to me. The, Ephesians 5 says, you were once darkness, but now you are light. Not that you're in the light and not that you were in darkness. You were darkness, but now you are light. Woo! And so know this, have this perpetual outlook, this forever outlook on your own life. Man, I'm just going to enjoy life. I'm going to enjoy today. Just like Jennifer was saying, even with the pain that she's been experiencing, and it's been a lot of pain that she's experienced over the last week, uh, but it's, it's, it's getting to a place of I'm not going to let the pain rule my life. I'm not going to allow what's going in my body. My body's not going to tell me whether or not I get to enjoy life or not. God sustains me. God, I don't know why it's taken so long. I don't know what, you know, it doesn't make any difference. In, in other words, a miracle isn't dependent on time because God is eternally now. And so maybe there's some things that has to happen, you know, in our heart or, or, or in our heart as we're believing God, as we're standing. But I do know this. The Bible says, having done all to stand. Because God is still faithful and God doesn't change. And so might as well have fun in the midst of it. Praise God. Praise God. And not only that, I mean, can we have fun? Can we have fun? And then Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. It says a merry heart, a merry heart does good does good like a medicine. The best medicine sometimes that you can have isn't what the doctor prescribes. See, that's part of what the kingdom of God is about. That's part of the reason why Jesus came. The Bible talks about that the kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say joy. 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 You need to be infused with joy this morning. You need to be infused with, with the joy. So, so, so how could we describe that? The Bible actually calls, in some cases, the joy that we should experience as believers as joy unspeakable and full of glory. Like, it's, it's, it's so amazing that, <laughs> that you can't even describe what you experience that the greatest time in your life with your family, with your kids, that you just laughed and you laughed and you laughed and 
is one of the most amazing, you know, you just remember those, those times and experiences that the joy that you experience from God should surpass all of that. All of that. You, your heart should be in a place of having, it should be merry and having a continual feast. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you know, you know, as you come to church and as you recognize or as you go different places, you know, it's okay if there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, right? If you want to come to church wearing a mask, then come to church wearing a mask and laugh the whole time while you're doing it. Enjoy it. If you want to go out in the public wearing a mask, wear a mask and enjoy it. Have fun. Don't feel condemned. Don't feel what do people think or anything like that. No, 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 no. Be whatever state that you're in. Whatever it is, wherever, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you have confidence in, do it and do it fully. Be 100% committed to it and say, Father, I just thank you. You're sustaining my life, but I can enjoy it. I mean, if you're going to get a mask, make sure it's got a funny face on it or something like that. I mean, just have fun with it. And I want, I want anybody to know, look, as, as we come in week after week, and even if we were to hear, you know, like I said, uh, the, the, I know of two people that uh, that tested positive. And so what they're going to do is they're going to quarantine, they, you know, for the next two or three or uh, next two weeks or whatever that is. And that's fine. That's considerate, that sort of thing. But um, everywhere we go now, it's out there. So if you're, <laughs> let me say it this way. If you're, if you're looking at your ability to keep from being exposed to it and that you're, uh, that you're, <laughs> what'd you just say? She says, it ain't happening. And Wendy's a nurse, and so she knows. It ain't happening. You're going to be around it. So, perhaps, maybe don't, be, don't put all of your faith and trust in your ability to keep from being exposed to it. Put all your faith and trust in the Father that's on the inside of you. And He, greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. And still do the other stuff that you feel comfortable with doing. And that, and don't, and don't judge and condemn others for the way that they are reacting. Don't judge those that aren't wearing masks. Oh, well, I would wear. And don't judge the, that aren't wearing masks or those that are. We lift each other up. We love each other. We're going to have a continual feast. Would you stand with me, please? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. I challenge, I challenge you this week. Let your week be about praise, worship, enjoying life. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Lord, I'm asking for every person here, every person watching by live stream. Father, that as we, as we make sure that our, our outlook is at the right place, Lord, we'll think on those things that are good, true, perfect, lovely, just, of a good report, having virtue and praise. That's what your word says to do. We make the decision. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will stay in a place of joy. I will rejoice in you, Father. I'm asking for just people to connect with joy like never before. Joy like never before. Let today be, uh, let this week be one of the, the most joyful weeks that they've ever experienced. Do y'all want that? Do y'all want that this week? Can you, can you, can you just raise your hands and say, let that be me, my Lord. I, remember I said, did you come expecting? Did you come expecting this morning? Did you come expecting? Thank you, Father, for the download of joy, of joy, unspeakable and full of glory. In Jesus' name, right now, in Jesus' name, let this week be one of the most, one of the happiest weeks that they've ever experienced in Jesus' name.